We're back with the breakfast uh, this morning on Plus TV Africa, and it's time for us for all of the press. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be having Ezekiel Yaitu because earlier announced we have Shola Molayo who's joining us this morning via phone. Shola, it's good to have you join us on Off the Press. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I'm good morning, Nigeria. All right, then. Let's take a quick look at uh, the Punch newspaper. By the way, my colleague is here, Kofi Battels. He's also, uh, you know, part of the show. I know time you hear his voice. Uh, the Punch newspaper says, NLC protests CBN to flood banks with old Naira notes. That's boldly written on the Punch newspaper. I mean, contrary to, you know, the reports on our top trending, NLC is going to embark on that strike. They're asking their unions and everyone to shut down entirely until the government sort out the issues that they have raised. But uh, the CBN is saying they are going to flood the banks with old Naira notes. Banks get 1,500 notes from the CBN today to prevent NLC action. Okay. MFLE orders end to cash withdrawal limits during the meeting with bank CEOs. So we're going back. And then you have uh, 146,000 National Assembly candidates petition tribunals in 12 states. 146 National Assembly candidates petition tribunal in 12 states. Buhari Islamic Council preach love as ramadan begins federal executive council okays 454 billion naira for kanu niger republic i beg your pardon kanu niger republic rail and others oh really what's what's the connection uh with the you know kanu niger republic uh rail right there and then you have buhari osibajo obasanjo clinton orders hail Illumelu at 60, apparently was his birthday. The United Kingdom to list electoral offenders and plan sanction. Tunubu away from Lesa Hadia rest. Uh, that's uh, what we find. Again, uh, just before we just uh, move away from that, you find uh, these jubilation as. OT Alex wins Abia and PDP retains Enugu. That's it this morning on the Punch newspaper. You know, when I heard you say OT, my, my, my mind went to OT. <laughs> <laughs> OT, OT. Okay, very quickly, very quickly, so I can go to our guest. The Daily Trust has um, the big headline CBN releases mopped up old notes to banks today uh, as LLC threatens mass action. Despite one trillion naira in circulation, cash crunch persists. Rush for Ramadan shopping amidst naira scarcity price hike. Uh, that's that's what we just take from the, the Daily Trust. All right, uh, just quickly then, we will just take another headline uh, that's on uh, the Guardian newspaper. Article to tribunal declare me winner or or the rerun. Uh, I'm just wondering, you see that it's not just one candidate that's approached the tribunal. You have the Labour Party, you also have, and at the end of the day, you're asking who owns this certificate. I mean, exactly uh, who does this? But it reminds me of the Bible story where you had the two women grappling for the child. One says, take the child away. The other says, leave the child. And then NLC threatens strike as CBN orders banks to come for old notes. World uh, leaders hail... Illumilu's impact on Nigeria and Africans' economy, and uh, that's it. Healing cannot happen without justice. Uh, Vivo replies to the book. That's it this morning on The Guardian. All right, let's uh, go over to our guest. Um, thank you very much for your time once again, Mr. Shola Omolayo. Good morning. Yes, um, yes. Let, let's start with this um, uh, U-turn, studying U-turn by the Central Bank of Nigeria. I think it began by the CBN governor, Putting out some some news and saying somewhere that you know the uh, the policy has has yielded some results of what they wanted it to achieve, and then we have the NLC giving an ultimatum and saying they're going on strike or the protest nationwide. And now we're hearing he met with bank CEOs, and he's saying that uh, uh, they should, um, like we saw in the in the, in the punch newspaper, um, end the cash withdrawal limits, and of course um, release they're releasing old notes to the bank. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Was it worth the trouble? Well, I, I, I would say that um, we are living in a confused state now where our leaders are, they don't even know what to do in some of the policies they put on, on ground. It's like they don't get to the letters of some of their policies. Why would you want to do that? It's not that I'm not sympathizing with a lot of us that are going through some hardship of this policy, this note, 
But there is a purpose for it. And if you try to flood the system now with that cash, is it at a reasonable level or just to break the strike that is coming up with the NLC? Why don't you call the, the leaders of the NLC and harmonize the purpose of you putting this policy on ground before you take to it? One, you said it's because of election review, seconded by the fact that you said it's not going to, it's going to curtail the, the rate of kidnappings in Nigeria. And I've come to think of it, somehow, somewhere, some of these things are beginning to reflect. Yes, election review, which is not a, a, it's not a CBS law. Well, you venture into it, and we get the results. We should be able to analyze this. Why don't you give to the bank as promised? The 1,500 and notes, and you are not doing it, and you know that you want the operation of the currency to be fair enough, why don't you call the directors or the owners of this land to open up their bar? Because the problem is not the trafficking of this money. It's the bar that is not wide enough to contain some of the transaction that is going on. You want to transfer a certain amount from a, a, a certain bank to the other bank, it won't go. Unless you join, uh, uh, you operate with this bank that is in the internet, I don't want to mention it. Which, if everything happens to anybody's money, you can't, you get no way you can get them, it's just going to be like the MM stop. Why are we confused? All because the banks are not doing what they ought to do by a life of someone to transact money as it ought to be. Now you are playing with the nation. Do you know how many people have died? Who is going to appease these ones? Now you want to flood the bank. Can you imagine flooding the bank, killing the purpose of why you withdraw this money? Yeah, yeah, very, very quickly, Mr. Omolayo, what do you say to one of the papers saying that the reason why the Central Bank of Nigeria is going to flood the banks with this old narrow notes is because of the NLC action? I think that, 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 that can't be too far from the truth. <laughs> That's why I'm saying that they, they just open up a policy without getting to check it right and missing the people that are involved. And even the NLC trying to do that right now, it's even too late. It's too late. Because we, 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 we're in a dying situation that nobody knows the left from the right. Is it that are they now saying that they just allow the election to go on first after concluding with the election we can then go to the next stage? What is the purpose of going on strike? What is it going to uh, lead to that to create a kind of confusion which the bank are bringing in? But it's just idle. That's the main reason why they are doing that. But it's, it, 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 it. people might not like it, but should be told. Because if you say you are flooding the bank because of the action of the NLC that is coming up today or whatever, or tomorrow, whenever, you have just defeated the purpose of why the policy was put in place. But some days, sometimes, they are still coming back to it. Let's also look at, um, you know, still with the cash issue and uh, the CBN. Uh, it's also reported that the Mephili... Uh, orders to end uh, cash withdrawal limits during the meeting with bank CEOs. And let's not forget that this policy is not just the first time in terms of limit. We had uh, had an introduction sometime in 2012 where there should be a limit for individual withdrawals and corporate organization. So what do you make of, you know, this sudden U-turn? I, 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 I just told us that that these leaders are just playing with the destiny of Nigeria. Why put up a policy that you cannot defend? And you can, like you cannot enforce? What is, the, what is really wrong with the banking institution? What is wrong with that? Why can't I just pick my phone and do a transaction, sending that 1,000 error, and within seconds the money is gone? That's just the problem. It's not the never note on the street we are talking about here. You want to do a, a, a business by just transit. See, a bread seller, Nigerians are very, very easy to govern. A bread seller was carrying a pill 
POS with ha. And say, by Fredo, I get POS. By Fredo, I get POS. You choose to buy the bread, you try to pay, they, 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 you need to wait to confirm if the money is gone. Just this elementary side of it. Why are they dealing with the people instead of dealing with themselves, the executive guys, all these awkward guys? Go check the record of how they operate. We are still working on this analog stuff. Instead of us, instead of them doing the job for us, they will ask you to do the job for them. That's why your money will go, will fly away. You go into the bank and you tell them, I tried to do a transaction and the money was not going. Nobody's going to say anything. They will tell you they can't, look, they can't do anything about it. They rather tell you go and meet to the bank you transfer to your own bank. Your own bank will ask you to go and deal with the people you transfer the money to. We're just living in animal kingdom here. Where some animals are far bigger than another. They may feel like keeping all right and that uh, order. Why is it doing so? You can't tell. You can't. So I just analyze this whole stuff that these people are just playing a test game on innocent citizens of this country. That's just it. One man turning the, the table around and nobody to check him out. Man, this is bad. All right. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tragic comedy. The uh, reason I say yeah. tragic because uh, the... Uh, people have lost their lives as a result of this, and some businesses have yep. have really um, suffered as a result of uh, of this situation. We'll keep watching to see if uh, anything happens. We also know Ramadan is just around the corner, and um, it yep. will have been difficult for for people to get get you know their food and all that. Um, let's let's go on to other stories from uh, the Guardian. Um, all right, healing. Yesterday, the president. Elect has been talking about healing, healing, healing. In a statement that uh, was put out, um, uh, you know, regarding the the uh, voter suppression and violence around the country. Uh, but the Labour Party's press governorship candidate River State is quoted as by the Guardian as saying, "Healing can't happen without justice." Roads Viva. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on this, please? <laughs> you see, I will ask us to. Allow the people to rest for now. Let the parties do their thing. I just believe that there's still a lot to be discussed in time. When you look at Labour Party, it's so unfortunate that that party find itself where it is now. With the clamor, with the expectation, and even with the growing understanding of politics in this country, I thought that the Labour Party should be having nothing less than six to seven governors to themselves. But if you don't have this, and you are claiming to fight for justice, how are you going to do it? How? Politics all over the world has a pattern. But on the same tree, you know, the chiefs and the interests. I think Labour Party should, I don't know what they know, but on the elementary level, you don't just wake up in the morning with a cutlass to fight a lion. Or you think you can walk with a shovel to bring down an elephant. I am so disappointed by some of the events that happened in these few days. But good for them. I want to believe that the only state they are having will be sustained. And let's see what days ahead is going to offer Nigerians. Okay, so are you saying that um, there is no need for, for justice for victims of um, uh, uh, voter suppression, uh, victims of um, uh, uh, attacks, those who are beaten up and not allowed to vote? Um, you know, uh, those, those, 
you know, yeah, I, no, I'm just asking if you're saying if there's no need, there's no need for justice. I'm not yes, saying sir. that's why that's why I say that we should we should wait, look at the events in days ahead. How they are going to? That you know, I made a statement just now that I don't know what they know. Okay, but but, but it, it, let yeah, me use. Yeah, is, is, um, is there a need for justice? You know, regarding what has happened in yes. in recent days, it's just a simple. You, know, you talk of justice. I understand what what you talk about. Mr. Tosh wrote saying that don't let us talk of peace. Let's talk of equal rights and justice. He said, I don't need no peace. All I need is equal rights and justice. But for you to talk of justice and bringing it the right to it, you must have a walking tool that you are, you are going to take up to battle. Let me give you a case study. Why I'm saying this? Because I, I look at elementary things and wait for them. The outcome, so that if it happens, somebody will not say the, the judicial system are not fair enough. Where I voted, I mean, where I, I a polling booth where I believe I, I voted, I discovered that over 60 guys who ought to be working for labor don't even have their PBC. They were just in a corner they were having fun watching this from my head. I mean, from afar. Inside of man, I just laughed. All you could just hear is that when they are going to count the boot, make sure you count it right too. And I asked myself, if about 25 to 50 guys who are sitting there are not coming up to vote here, at the end of the day, they are the ones that will be shouting the numbers of the total vote cast. And these are the same people that will be shouting, we are going to court. How do you manage that? How would you say that Kano state that changed the dice of the APC uh, by after voting for? Um, is it a MNPP? Um, 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 yes. Um, so l let me come in there quickly before we move to the next, uh, you know, story on one of the papers. Right now, if you were saying that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, persons didn't have for those who were part of the Labour Party didn't have PVCs or were just sitting aloof and decided not to vote. I also want to believe that you factor in, you know, the issue of um, the process pre-election process of registration, uh, getting their PVCs as well. Now, because we have been monitoring things that are going on, not necessarily uh, limited to a certain political party, we're saying in general, there are a lot of persons who would have loved to be part of this election that couldn't really be part of it because of you know some of the hiccups and glitches that they faced in terms of collecting their PVCs. It was difficult for so many persons. Whether you talk about, you have a category of persons who want to transfer their PVCs, you know, uh, from a certain constituency. Maybe they have moved cities, they have moved towns, they have moved local government, and that process was not very, you know, successful. There were a lot of persons who also constantly went to the offices of the umpire to get their PVCs and did not get it. So I, I don't think that it would be rational and fair to say that uh, a certain you know, group of persons who belong to a certain party, uh, X, Y, Z, whatever party it is, they were just standing aloof and then they were just, you know, just decided to make some sort of statement because they didn't have PVCs. We also need to factor the fact that it has been very cumbersome. If we look at, you know, the uh, report in the Southeast, you saw a lot of PVCs that were being thrown out. So I, I think that it would be fair to understand that so many Nigerians, including, you know, those who were related to me by blood, wanted to cast their vote, they did not. And some of them went to the polling unit, even when they have their PVCs, but they were chased away by thugs and, you know, all of this uh, criminal element. So again, would it be really fair, you know, to put out all of this thought? But just as you respond to that, I'd like you to also uh, look at this. Uh, it's also on the Guardian newspaper. Abia State becomes the first state in Nigeria's fourth republic to successfully elect a governor from an independent political platform. How do you react to this? All right. I, 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 if, you, if we are to analyze on this political um, 
outcome that we are having, it's not just going to be a two or three minutes um, talk. But let me say this. I'm not saying that there is no flaw in most of the um, states that we have. I'm not saying that. But look at what happened in Abia. The people stood their ground. They were not breaking bottles. They were not using cutlass. They stood their ground and make sure that their candidate was announced. With all the machination that was going on to soundtrack their own candidate, they were there. They know what they voted for, and the announcement was made. Let me also say this. If you know you have the strength, you notice that there is a place where some hoodlums were coming to do stuff. The people, the owner of the house, stood their ground. They chased this criminal out. In my own police boots, we also make sure that sanity was put in place. Some of them might want to come, but they know what they find on ground. See, you cannot defend your state with outsiders. If you get threatened, you get killed. Nigeria is a place of fighting for the survival of the soul of this nation. And we all must be involved. We know these things are coming up. We know the numbers of force we are having, which is either the military or the police. We can't depend on these ones alone. We already criticized some of these things before the days of election. And the government are telling us that these are the people that we defend us. But you and I know they don't have the manpower to do so. Where you have the police of this nation that is not up to either 600 to 700,000, manning an election period of expecting nothing less than 80 million people to come and vote, so we end up having what is not up to 30 million. See, there are things we ought to be treating before the days of events. We only juggle these things together and expecting that we all go to court. See, we have principalities in this, in, in, in this uh, 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 democratic structure that has been there from 1960 to 1963. And you want the young ones of my, of, of, I mean, of my age sort of to talent these people and we are going to stay back the second story I'm not saying people should go about it. But it, we know that some of the people that have come to vote, the young ones that have come to vote at this time, these are scholars of age that ought to know that this is what we should do and barricade our public units so that some of these Chinatown will not come in and spread us away. You are saying people are depressurized from both man. I just told you of an event of finding about 50 people who had no polling booth, uh, polling um, BBC to vote. These are the same people that we uh, shouting uh, 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 justice, justice, justice. So, so um, we have to let it go, but that's not entirely true. And like I said before, there are other factors why a lot of people did not cast their vote. It would just be wrong to you. say that, uh, you know, you have a group of people who just decided not to cast their vote and they're just decided yes, to yes, say vote. Yes, I vote. agree. Yeah. I, I have my own. I don't want to talk about my own problem. I have an experience. But I don't want to discuss that now. We should keep the issue of ground first. Let's find justice, like you rightly said. There are things you know that I don't know. There are things that I know that I believe I should not discuss now because we want the best so, time for uh... it. We have to go now. Yes, yes. Uh, we thank you for your time. Yeah, <laughs> the, the fact is that the, the president-elect um, um, has a, 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 a peculiar situation. And his peculiar situation, Mr. Omo Layo, is that more of the people in the country are against him than those who are for him. You know, so if they, they perceive that they're not being treated fairly, he may have a hard time, you know, in his four years. And the, people need to be made to feel that there's some sincerity in trying to um, uh, fix fix the system and the problems. Um, yes, yeah, like like voter suppression. Yes, so, but we have to go, sir. 
uh, thank you so oh. much for, for your time. Apologies. We would definitely want to have you back, you know, because your analysis has been top notch and we appreciate God it. Bless. Shola Omolayo, uh, right there. Thank you. God bless, thank you. Well, that's the size of it. Uh, I feel like everything is actually, you know, in the public domain. There's really nothing that Nigerians didn't see, including uh, international observers. We also had. We'll take a break, and when we return, we'll delve into our first major conversation where you have the Labour Party, as well as the uh, PDP, also approaching the tribunal, asking for the disqualification, and also uh, reissuing the certificate of return. That would be the word. Uh, stay with us, we'll be right back.